is a continuation of a previous video in which I try to build a self-driving RC car that can race as well as a Formula One driver. Now, at the end of the previous video, I got the car driving around pretty fast, but that was just by following a center line. As a result, it's not exactly racing optimally, and as you can see here, it's overshooting its turn. So in this video, I'm going to push this car to its absolute limits. Coming up, a brand new track to race on, a bunch of interesting engineering lessons, and a lot of traction. Let's talk about racing lines. You might have seen them in racing video games, but essentially these are the lines that professional drivers follow to achieve the fastest lap time and win races. So if I want my car to drive as fast as possible, the first thing I need to figure out is how to generate these racing lines. Now, racing lines are actually super complicated. There's a lot of nuance to them and it really changes from track to track. For instance, consider a simple 90 degree corner. The geometric racing line will tell you to take the line with the largest turn radius possible, where you start from the outside of the turn, turn in to clip the apex located at the middle of the turn, and then end back up on the outside of the turn. This line allows you to approach this corner while maintaining the car at the highest overall speed. But corners don't exist in isolation. You see, we're not trying to optimize our speed for one corner, but rather for an entire track. So if after the corner, we end up in a long straight, we might want to turn into the corner earlier than the geometric racing line suggests. All this to say, racing lines are not that straightforward, and it takes years for racing drivers to master them and achieve optimal performance on a track. Now, thankfully, I'm not teaching a human how to drive, I'm teaching a robot. <laughs> It turns out that there's a much more efficient and rigorous way of approaching this problem instead of having to rely on intuition. Because I have the power of computers and simulations, which means I can actually solve for the optimal racing line. Now before I even generate a racing line, I need a track. In the previous video, this track that I was racing on was pretty much just a square. So it wasn't the most interesting. Yeah, it was... <laughs> It is currently 6.20 a.m. This is the only time of the day where there aren't any engineering students here, but actually there already is. It's 6.20 a.m. There's someone. But yeah, we're gonna be running slam and yeah. Now, for the footage that you're seeing here, I'm actually running the slam on the fifth floor and not the third floor. And that's because on the third floor, there are these bridges. They look really cool, but the problem is that the walls are made out of glass. And if you know anything about LiDAR, well, they don't work well at all with glass. And so what you see is like these really bad scans of like, it doesn't know what's a wall is or not. It's like half of them go to the what do you call it? Glass. I tried running slam like 10 different times. Every single time, the map was either misaligned or I couldn't even save the freaking map. Why am I taking so long for these projects? Am I just stupid? Uh, yeah. You stupid. Anyways, I gave up on mapping the third floor. So here you can see me mapping out the fifth floor and it turned out to be a pretty good map. Okay, so I got a map generated with SLAM, but this is not really a racing track. So let's turn it into one. I used Photoshop to do this, and after 30 minutes of Photoshopping the map, we end up with this ugly looking track that even a toddler could do a better job. But yeah, that's the best I could have done. So now we're finally ready to begin the process of generating racing lines. The high level idea of generating racing lines is actually quite simple. We want to try a bunch of racing lines in simulation, measure the lap times for each of these racing lines, and then our optimal racing line would just be the one with the shortest amount of time. The problem is we can't really brute force this by trying every single possible racing line. 
that would be way too slow. So we need to do something called constrained optimization. Think about it like this. When you are racing, there are a bunch of constraints that you must respect. You are constrained on where you can drive, and you are also constrained on how fast you can accelerate, decelerate, and approach turns based on what car and how much grip your tires have. So with constraint optimization, we use a solver that takes in all of these constraints, translates them into systems of equations, and then tries to minimize lap time while satisfying all of these constraints. And this is much faster than brute forcing because we're limiting the search space with all of these constraints. Of course, I've oversimplified a lot, but you can take a look at the code in the description. Now, there's one more thing. To run the optimization, we need to extract the center line out of the map. Well, turns out a really simple and clever way to do this is to use an image processing function called the Euclidean Distance Transform. This takes in a binary image which only contains black and white pixels and calculates the distance from each pixel to the nearest background pixel, which is black in this case. Now, do you see how this can be useful for extracting the center line? Well, if we first convert our original track into a binary image and then apply the Euclidean Distance Transform, then the set of pixels with the highest values are simply going to be our center line. So then I just used the skeletonized function, which reduces the track to a one pixel wide representation, and that's basically our center line. So now that I was able to generate racing lines, I went out there and tested out these racing lines to see if it actually helped the car go faster. Just hold it. Now here's how the racing line actually looks like for this square track. As you can see it's following basically the geometric racing line and here is the velocity profile that's attached to it. So as you can see, depending on where you are on the track, the solver tells you exactly how fast to go for each point. Now here I was running the car at around 20% of the speed that the solver gave us and it seemed to work really well so I just full sent it. So as we know, if it can go slow, it can go fast. If you can play something slowly, you can play it quickly. Oh my God. I might have broken the lighter, guys. My profits can be so bad. We might be in big trouble. Yeah, so I almost broke my $1,500 LiDAR. In fact, if you look here, there's like still a huge scratch mark that you can see. But the keyword is almost. Yes. It's not broken. <laughs> so the next day, I went in again at 2 a.m. with some okay, friends. Okay, so now we're doing at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 X speed. Oh, that's the speed. speed. Oh, dude! <laughs> you went twice the speed? No, no, this. No, it was 0.3, now it's 0.4. Yeah, so 50% speed seemed to be working fine, so let's try 70% speed. More traction. At this point, I called it a day because I was just too scared of crashing the car again. But upon reviewing the footage, I noticed that the car was actually slower than in the previous video. What the hell? That is unacceptable. We cannot stop here. I'm gonna get this car running at 100% speed because I want to absolutely destroy this stop time from the previous video. I present to you three weeks of intense engineering. <laughs> The car seems to be oscillating too much at high speeds. Let's re-implement our controllers to have smoother steering with the following change. Okay, nice. It's oscillating a lot less now, but the car is overshooting its turns. When in doubt, add water. This should give the tires more grip and maintain speeds on turns. Uh, we're still overshooting the goddamn turn. Okay, Lewis Hamilton will not like this, but let's have the car brake slightly earlier. Oh, I got this pretty good run. 
uh, not, not this one. Let's go, it seems to be working. Well, I think I really pushed this car to its limits. No, we're not done. Faster, faster, faster. We need more speed. Damn, boy, he did. Okay, the car seems to be stuttering like, to have low pull. This reaching more. Let's fix the loose gear. Ah, this motor here turns this really tiny gear. If they're not tight enough together, there's all this slippage. So all we need to do is make sure these two are tighter together. Oh my god, the car's so much more responsive and can accelerate faster. But we need to go even faster! Oh, they put a software limit of 5 meters per second on this car. No wonder it can go faster. And after three weeks of pain and pain and pain. Oh my god, this feels so good, man. I said this feels so good, man! So we did it! We got this car racing 4 seconds faster than in the previous video and we're not even done yet because we still haven't raced this car on the big track that we've already mapped out. So now we're ready to take everything we've learned from racing on the small track onto the big track. And oh boy am I scared because this track is at least 3 times as big and who knows what this car is capable of crashing into. You know, these whole three weeks of trial and error really gave me a newfound appreciation for racing drivers because these guys can just be put on any car and any track and very quickly they learn to push the limits of the car without crashing the actual car. Alright, let's get back to racing. As I've said, this is going to be the biggest track I've ever raced on. Now, I ran this track through my racing line solver and here is the racing line generated where the brighter the color, the faster you're supposed to go. So we're gonna start right here, right next to the trash, because this is where my code belongs. And right off the bat, we're going to be accelerating super duper fast, right into the super tight corner, where we're obviously not going to crash into the wall. Come on, man, we're just getting started. And then we're going to be taking a very large right turn at a pretty high constant speed. Accelerate a little bit. And then we turn left hit the apex, and then go through this sick bridge. This is probably my favorite part of the track. And then we're going to be turning left again and not hit the wall. Followed by a long straight, flat out. And then to finish the lap, we're going to go through the left door. And then the right door. And then pass by the recycling bins. And there we go, we've completed a lap. Simple. Now, we just gotta do the same thing, but go faster. And hopefully, my code's gonna work. What? What? And the entire computer's not gonna fall out. This thing fell out. This Ooh. is gonna be interesting. It's not supposed to be like that.
Damn. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, okay. Bro, I told you, you gotta believe in your software. R I don't. Okay, let's go. <laughs> How about this work? <laughs> what the heck? Look at Spinner. What the fuck? <laughs>